Praise God. Amen. We've all made it to a sanctuary today. I pray to God that your return, my return, will be equally the same. Thank you for last night. There's a spirit you can feel. My brother walked up at the body door. <laughs> and I kept saying, I wonder if he knew when he shot Kennedy and Dallas, how many body guards he had. If we do the research on the body guards, was part of it. Again, thank you. Harry. I wonder if you all really know who you are. <laughs> Black folks, especially here in this country, are the most powerful people in the history of the planet. <clears throat> but if white folks don't tell you, you don't see them. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'd love to be with you because, one, I've been black 84 years. <laughs> Black woman for 57 years. What in the world is that? I mean, see the black children? Uh, and then one day we will understand the church. We can survive a little bit better today without them. But when I was born in 1932, it was critical. Born and raised in St. Louis, her uncle or aunt died in Mississippi. You just didn't run down and get on the bus, get in your car. You called the minister, and they gave you a P route. Because you couldn't just pull over and walk into any place. And they met you, carried you to a house, had dinner ready, and treated you the way black folks supposed to be treated. And they did the same thing coming back. In some kind of way, y'all sit around and let a system that enslaved you. A white woman in America didn't get the right to vote for 1921. That's his mama, his daughter, his girlfriend, his wife. You know what kind of thug we have to deal with? And y'all don't seem to understand that? Huh? You don't understand who you are? And I don't always want to talk to you about family value. Your mama needs to be talked to about family. I ain't never stole nobody. I never enslaved nobody. I never raised them children while I'm picking your cotton. You the one need to understand family values. Not me. Somewhere. I'm so happy about Obama. Not for the reasons y'all are. I'm so happy. Happy, happy. Why? Because we've been led into all that crap. Behave yourself, get a good education, stay out of trouble. You see, there's a universal God that supersedes the church, and you don't have to go through no crap. All you got to do is look at your head, and the Pope is one of the strongest church people in the history of the planet, but he can't make a hand. He can't make a hand. Ah. I looked at him when he was over, he got sciatic or so bad, and I told him to wash my feet. Somewhere. We're going to a new era now. One of the fine things that ever happened, but you don't hear it, but you're locked into some crap. 
Somebody told me, said, don't forget his children here. What I care? Huh? What I care? You worry about children, go home and read your story to them. Get your Bible, read the story of King David. Come on, children. This is King David. It's in the Bible. Look across the balcony and saw this naked one, which was another man's wife, and he sent to her. That's in your Bible. <laughs> They got a person. They tell me now that your, your husband got on the front line fighting my war. They sent for him. He came back and he said to his wife, while oh, my men are dying, I don't want to participate in pleasure. So he didn't have it. And when David found that out, he killed him. Y'all need to read the Bible. Huh? Read it. I've read a lot of stuff about the Bible myself. And Jesus turned water into wine. My oldest son took all his college money and turned it into beer. <laughs> Y'all hear something? Y'all put so much emphasis on football, sports, entertainment. Huh? I know who you are. There's some people in here that have done more to expand the humanities than 99.9% of all the black athletes and entertainers put together. Huh? You don't know. Someone. Someone. You look at all this crap on TV. Cops, boom, 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 boom. And you black folks sit back and let them debate. You saw the pictures. Huh? You saw him shoot him. Huh? But they still can debate. Somewhere. You looked at what happened in Flint, Michigan. That's 99% black folk. That's so little children. You worry about what I was saying in front of a child. They just stayed in power. And you don't give a damn. You ain't lost your appetite. You don't got one. Somewhere. And so I say thank you to you black folk for y'all made me. When I started out being a comic, black comics couldn't work like black folks. You could sing and you could dance, but they wouldn't let you stand flat-footed and talk because the real white folks knew who you were. And they didn't want that heard. They knew you. And so you white folks in here, I'll be saying some things about white folks, but it won't be about you. <laughs> about 500 white folks on the planet and the rest of y'all is imposters. <laughs> when you black folks and white folks understand the white thing of color, it's an attitude. And if you ain't got trillions of dollars in the bank, you can't have the attitude. And most of you folks in this room ain't never seen a white person. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth makes three hundred and sixty million dollars every twenty-four hours just interest on her money. Now them these white folks. <laughs> when you go out to them, you get home up in the air. <laughs> and everything you hear black folks say about white folks, we ain't talking about you. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. 
Somewhere you know that if one of your children went out to the Hilton Hotel today and killed 40 white folks, they're going to get the lecture chair. But if Prince Charles' son came here with his drug at itself and killed 100 white folks, you know he's not going to get the lecture chair and let us you tolerate him and talk about some gods you believe in. There's a little ignorant white boy got drunk up on the sidewalk, killed more people. And he said, oh, he did it because he's rich. Now, y'all told me he gets some money, good education, everything for you all right. And y'all listen to him tell you that, and they ain't told you where their money comes from. You don't know no more about them folks now than you did before it happened, and you're not going to demand it. Somewhere. And black men, when you find out who this black woman is, you hear me? And I don't know if you white folks know this, we'll cut you on a secret. The black woman you sit next to, she's the only woman on the planet can take a butter knife and cut your ties to the rim. <laughs> Getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to let me wipe and do, and do yoga? She don't need none of that. And all she asked that part was who was Malcolm? <laughs> and when y'all get home today, especially you wipe home, get a butter. <laughs> it won't even cut butter. <laughs> When you want to go find out how we be laughing at y'all about your dogs. Go to Harvard or Yale or all them schools you think is good. How a black man is to change your baby's diaper but walk your own dog and pick up the dog doo doo. <laughs> And you don't see nothing wrong with that? <laughs> Somewhere. And you want to play that on us, you got to have a perfect credit score. My credit score is so messed up. Somebody stole my credit cards and called me, called the police. <laughs> and this nigga, you don't need to get him on the street. <laughs> <laughs> we did. That's all you have to do. Them credit people calling you now. I know you white folk don't do it. Here's your sister. Put the child. Tell them I'm not home. Once you tell the child to lie for you, they'll lie to you. I said, right to you. Yeah, this is the equipment. They don't know what to do. Them white folks been trained <coughs> that you're going to come to the phone and say it ain't you. And when you tell them it's you, they got to run back to the books and say, what do you say when they say <laughs> That white boy told me, this ain't you. I said, well, how old are you? <laughs> so I'm 22. I said, I've been on this company this money before you was born. <laughs> what made you think you were going to get it in your life? <laughs> if you play your cards right, you can retire on this account. <laughs> Y'all worry about these damn student loans? First, you know how to finish school. They can't take that back. You already got it. Why are you scared? I got a brother with two PhDs calling me to the news. They're about to repossess my car. What must I do? Don't park in front of the house. I went to Budapest not too long ago. 
real white folks. Serious white folks. And they try to trick you. You see, the, uh, we paid you two hundred thousand dollars, but we brought you here early because a couple of them just need to ask you some questions. Why do y'all feel so good because white folks is asking y'all questions? Huh? I said, questions about what? I said, well, what's the main thing that you got on your mind right now? I said, I'm trying to figure out what happened to albinos after high school. <laughs> Uh, Just that about. Uh, huh? 
when I was a little boy, we knew the men school teachers were having sex with the little girls. Then when the women started having sex with the boys, it become a crime. <laughs> Boy, if I could just be 15 years old again. <laughs> 15 years old. <laughs> Teachers having sex with the students. <laughs> I don't see my mama now. Boy, where are you going out of here on Christmas morning with them books? <laughs> Why are you going to school on Christmas morning? I'm getting a little behind in my class. So, you have to spend some time. With something this important on calendar. 99.9% .9 of the calendars is made by white folks, and those of you that have them, you buy them from white folks and they make them from you. And you're so busy listening to their crap, you overlook something. Calendar. A man named Martin Luther King that killed him. Wasn't bothering nobody. But they didn't understand that when you move past the church and get up to that real God, that's the one that all white folks calendar got his name on it. And the date. All the guns in the world, we couldn't have put them on white folks and say, you're going to put this nigga thing in the calendar. That's how the universe works. Uh, all over the world, if you got an American calendar, you see Dr. Martin Luther King. Dead. And they can't do nothing about it. Obama, y'all, y'all like Obama for the wrong reason. Uh, huh? If you was seven years old now, you hear me? That means ever since Obama been president, you've been alive. The most powerful human being on the planet is the President of the United States. And he's about to finish up eight years. When you be eight years old, you ain't never seen nothing in the White House but a black president. And when this election come up, when they elect a white person, you say, I didn't know a white person was this president. <laughs> people for the thug I am and how stupid I am. That little child hated saucy and it'll never be wiped out. I got little problems with Obama. He ain't nigga enough for me. <laughs> I got white folks who work for me. I said, well, if you're mad at him, why don't you like the white part of his mom's white? <laughs> <laughs> and every night I say my prayers, I pray God, God, that I can be born. I never thought I'd see the day. I pray to God that if I can come back again, then you come back as a white boy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, think about how lucky you white folks are. Nobody in the history of the planet has ever been treated like we were treated doing slavery. And when you finally get you a black president, he's so behaved. <laughs> Don't raise his voice. I mean, tell you about that. All of you white folks is lucky. Just as nice and kind. <laughs> I ran for president in 1968, and I won. You told about a nigga in the White House. <laughs> No better than this president. I think I'm born in 1932. I have heard in my life till he got in the White House, white folk jumping over the fence. 
Well, if I'd have been president, I'd say, yeah, come on. And your mama, your daddy, your father. And I'd go to Indonesia someplace and find me some white cow. And I'd hide and get rid of the secret service. So when y'all jump over this man, these cannibals will be waiting on you. So take a good bath. Get all that soap off me. Or you dinner. Every day. Hey, you been over the White House fence. The white folks done got so comfortable. Two weeks ago, I saw some white folks show up. Got some ladders out the car, put up the fence, and climbed up the ladder and jumped in. And no gun went off. You say anything you want to say about it. We've had eight years with no war. Okay? Think about that. No war. So somewhere when you think about it, this organization and who you are. Hmm? You can put some stuff together when y'all move a couple of things around. When General Motors got ready to open up a car, they didn't just come to some meeting and say, we're going to make cars. No. You got to get the money. You all got all these big ideas and ain't got a problem. <laughs> ain't got a problem. Got all your education, the most part of that is grandma who you a barbecue for. And once you know who you are, yeah. huh? God made your heaven, not serious and red up. So how somebody will tell you your lips is ugly, your hair is ugly, when the same God that put the moon, the sun, the stars, all the ocean made that, that's who made you. And I ain't never heard you say the ocean is ugly. Well, I like the best thing ever happened. Is white folks say, see it, something, say something. I was in California the other day. I said, hey, I see something. Some ugly white folks over there. Look at them. <laughs> well, you said if I see something, say something. <laughs> so when you leave here, you know, I'm going to start putting some committees together and go look at the other heritages first, and then you know how far ahead you are than all of them. Hmm? Black heritages, most of the time, it's one day or two days. Huh? Not nine days. And then you leave here, and then you meet again before next year and plan stuff. Where you can get to know one another. And feel one another. And talk to one another. Huh? And stop being scared of God. Huh? Fear of God. Are you crazy? That's my problem. <laughs> I don't know how you white folks feel because I ain't never been around you. But you black folks, you go home, you mortgage do, and you won't pray. You think that God that put the whole universe in don't know your heart is too? When he told me about my heart to do, I just said, hey, champ, fix it. I'm going to waste my time telling God my mortgage ain't paid. God know that. When he told the Jews they put the blood on the door and I'll bypass you. What kind of God is you? You put everything in and don't know that you living in that house. Hey, go. How many of y'all remember when the government gave me the worst form of cancer you could have? Hmm? Worst form? Did I get scared? Hell no. I just said the guy ain't champ. Now there are some Negroes that deserve cancer, but I am not one of them. <laughs> and if you're tired and got some things to do, I'll write 12 of them down. And if you need some close to the house, I'll give you that too. Hmm? Y'all taking all this old foggy stuff that didn't work then and think it don't work now. My mama said, look at them Negroes out there gambling. So I hope none of y'all ever go up and gamble, but if you do, don't pray God. 
I didn't care about what she said, it made sense to me. Until that eyeball went up to her. <laughs> <laughs> Two million dollars, you talk about a Negro friend. I said, now nah, you know my mama didn't know she was <laughs> Not only do I want to win the eyeball, I don't want to win it with 12 other people. <laughs> I think I can do that without prayer. God, you know my heart. You know about me. I'll be good. <laughs> you know me. Now, I've been married to this black woman, God, for 56 years. If I win that money, I don't think it's going to change something. <laughs> but I ain't never had it. $1.2 billion. Well, I might walk in that house and see my wife and say, Lily, what's wrong with your neck? <laughs> say, nigga, you know what that is humping in my back here since we've been married. I didn't see it till today. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere. We have made a difference. Look at King. Changed the whole plan. The whole plan. And those of you who wasn't there, you missed something. Most of them was women. Grandma, grandpa, old men, young men. And they wasn't scared. We know we was dealing with some killers. But there's a universal God that white folk can trick. They tried it. See what I like about them. They honest. Them thugs from Philadelphia at the Constitutional Convention, they knew they were too filthy to be the face of liberty. They knew it. So then white boys said, we're going to take this liberty bell. Y'all need to go there and look at it. Liberty bell. And at 12 noon, July 4th, we're going to hit this bell. This will be the symbol of liberty. Them white boys hit that bell, and that universal God cracked that bell from the bottom all the way up to the top. And if you go there, the crack is still there. So liberty in America represent a cracked bell. And they can't change it. That's what we're talking to. That's what we're talking about. Huh? Y'all sitting here now worrying about my cousin called me in St. Louis when the stock market just cracked the lowest in the history of the stock market right after the holidays. He don't even know where the stock market is. He <laughs> He don't even know where it is. I said, what you upset about? He said he thought Dow Jones was a brother. <laughs> I'll leave you today. Don't stop doing what you're doing, but do it right. Don't think you're going to sit here and put something together that changed the lives and got people in your own house you don't like. Okay? Understand that universal God made you, not serious robot, not some cop. Even though they pay the price. More cops in America died from suicide than killed in the line of duty. But y'all won't know that. There's a force that don't have to tell you Black Lives Matter, they will show you. The number one divorce occupation in America. It's cops and they second wife is us. You can get by with stuff with me. You can get by with stuff with politicians, but there's a universal force. Huh? Queen Elizabeth, one of the richest white women on the planet. And if you took my welfare mother and cut her open, there's no difference in her heart and Queen Elizabeth's heart. That's what you got going. When I think about Faye Williams and all the women out here that can put stuff together, 
that they don't want to talk about. Rosa Parks, oh, she was just too tired to get up. Think about what they say. This never would have happened had our feet not been hurt. And we buy that? Somewhere. So I got to get to a meeting. I, my brother is right, but I need to talk to you. See, I'm getting ready to open up a business, and I need two white folks so I can get that minority loan. <laughs> I'm going to open up a black airline, and it's going to be black. It's going to be Tamika Air. <laughs> We leave late, but we get you there on time. <laughs> Until you white folks, we're not going to lose none of your bags, but we're not going to let you break none off. <laughs> and being black all my life, I know about the poor black folks. Y'all talking about what y'all doing to help them? I'm going to have another airline. Oh, I almost took a flight. <laughs> Don't need no money for that one. Just come on out to the airport. You don't have to be searched tonight. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you never have to worry about the plane wreck or the plane is not leaving. <laughs> so let me just say to you, I heard you last night. I was there. I heard you. You almost understand that. I've never read in the Bible Pepsi Cola or Coca Cola. I read about fasting and prayers and 99.9% of you never done it. Word about black goods on crack. As I leave you, remember one thing, as a black father. More you old black folks sitting in here now, that's hooked with salt and sugar, will be dead because of that addiction. And the crack addict is still be. Crack addicts don't have to take all kind of pills like you do to eat some bacon. <laughs> Someone, you are here and you can do some things in this time. King never left the clap and the world knew who you were. Yeah. You think you got to leave someplace. You see the sun every day and they never took a rocket to be there. It comes to you when this is pure. And this is clear. And you happy. And can get along. Huh? Calling somebody some names, that's like letting the air out your own time. And so again, as we leave you, I say thank you. But y'all got to sit around and talk about the first year, the second year, the third year. What it was about. You didn't just get here. You didn't fill this room up on your first year. Huh? Just understand who you are. And the world will feel that. Women. Because he don't treat his old lady right, don't mean you have to treat your old lady right. You leave home happy. Not honest with white folks. Yeah, they said, nigga, how come you can't get to work in time? Because the earlier I get here, the longer. Quick, I'll lose my dignity, and the earlier I can get off the quick, I'll get it back. <laughs> and you're going to come home and cuss everybody out in the house because some, some white boy said that you want a job. You ain't mad at your wife. You ain't mad at your children. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Nigga, this is my house. I'll kill you. <laughs> Say that to your son. To your daughter. Someone understand who you are and how we made it this far, not with Harvard and Yale and MIT, huh? So somewhere, and to those of you who hear and watch this and see it, be happy. What you got 
when the banks go bust, it's not going to affect the heritage. That will never change. Huh? You won't need no food. Huh? There's something inside of you that when you tuned in to the right order, it works. And so I say thank you. God bless you. Peace be with you.